<laughs> all right, folks. Well, let's let's do this all again. I mean, we've been we've okay. been live. I'm I'm saying right now we we would we've been live for ten minutes. Oh, here we go. We're actually live. Are we actually live now? Somebody please comment that you can actually see us oh and whatever now because uh, I was old toot my own horn. Ethan forgot to actually push the oh, button. What's a new button? Push the button that says go live. So Yeah, it says we'll go live after this ad. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. So it's actually doing its thing now. <laughs> well, let's go back through the last <sighs> ten minutes of stuff. Give me that cardboard box. <laughs> okay, folks. We um we have some I, I I literally just spent a really badass 10 minutes and 38 seconds of introducing stuff and realized that there was a second go live button when I schedule out a stream. So last time we just went live. This time we scheduled out a stream. So um, I'm going to start this over just like we did for everybody that is just tuning in for the first time. Thanks for being here. And for those of you that didn't know, this is episode 44. This is episode four. We're pretty sure this time. Yeah, we double, triple checked. Thank you all for paying attention and keeping us honest. Um, But this is Yawa, where you ask and we answer. We also like to uh, chit chat and being able to engage with you guys live, I think it's a lot more fun, a lot more interactive. And we got we're a ton try. of people that said that they loved the live format last week, so definitely want to try and keep that going. Yes, and we're going to do some really, really fun stuff um, as we continue, but this week specifically, I want to start by apologizing for me, okay? I'm actually going to probably blame the fact that you didn't push the go live button on the fact that you've been up since before the butt crack. Yeah. Which, in case anybody isn't familiar with that term, before the butt crack in this house refers to 2.45 a.m., which is when I got up this morning. I didn't even know he got up. I literally was like, I wonder if his alarm went off. He was supposed to be on the road already. I reach over onto the side of the bed. Yeah, he wasn't there anymore. Well, the good news was I did get up and woke up to a, I believe, somewhere in the vicinity of probably Two to four inches of uh, slushy crap. Wintry mix. Yeah, I believe the the meteorologist would refer to it as wintry mix. Um, Anyhow, I drove up to get something that uh, is very special. We've been working very hard, and I got some really good help from the folks there, uh, good friends there at the factory, um, to get out this product for you before our... Black Friday sale, which we do have coming up. If you haven't seen any advertisements or any of the posts that we put out, it's coming. And it's going to be awesome. You've probably seen this item in a few of our recent videos, but we've used this product for years. And finally, years and years, enough people have said, "Hey, are you going to ever have that available?" And we finally said, "Yes." Hey, can you make a bunch of those for us? And the conversation that's kind of how the conversation is like, "Hey, could you make a bunch of those for me?" And he's like, "Sure." Yeah, that's how that's how difficult it was. So, um, here's the here's the official unboxing of what I made a uh, eight hour round trip for today. Da, 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 da. What is this? You might say this is our aluminum water. Waters. Check that out. Okay, so first of all, gravity fed. Gravity fed, baby. You flip that thing up, all the water drains back in. It has a conveniently placed lip here to wrap your hand around, hold on to it, carry this thing, dirt to dirt to dirt. It holds approximately 1.2 gallons of water, which is a fantastic amount of water to take for a day trip or get to, and you have lots and lots of water. Um, you tip it down. Love that logo on the side, baby. And then America, made in America, 100%. Uh, and then... What dogs can drink out of here. Our dogs will drink two breast right next to each other. And then you can tip it back up. All the water runs back in and you're good to go. Now, there are a few other products out there on the market and I have used them all and I'm not going to name drop anything, but I'm sure that you guys, if you know what this is right off the bat, you've already tried and or know exactly what I'm talking about. And I will say that they don't work like this one. Uh, this one won't tip over in your truck. This one won't slosh all your water out. This one won't uh, freeze and crack. Um, it does all of the amazing stuff without all of the crappy stuff. So um, we tested this specific model to the max. 
including filling it up with water, setting it outside to freeze solid. Everything held fantastically. Brought it inside, thawed out, things still rocking and rolling. So tonight, to um, kick off the excitingness that is this new product for us and on our website, we're actually going to be giving one away to our viewers this evening. You got to be present, you got to be live to win, and you got to participate because this is going to be fun. Hey, we're not going to just give it away. I mean, we got to do something. We got to make this, you work right? for it. It's uh it's a gift or a prize or a a token of our appreciation to the biggest fan of the evening. Now, we have three questions. Count them. 1 2 3 questions that will be asked throughout this hour long Yawa. Yes. And you have to get all three correct. If we get multiple people that get all three correct, we're going to give them way multiple. And we're just going to draw out of a hat and then pick one name and send this to you. Yes. And if you really, really want one and you don't get picked and you don't win, they are going to be on our Black Friday weekend sale. Absolutely. So you can Did check you know it out that? there. We have a Black Friday weekend sale. Black Friday through Cyber Monday. Yes. Four days of amazing sales standingstonekennels.com. Okay, so let me get this thing out of the way, and we're going to jump right into chit-chat with Ethan and Kat. Um, pop, glug, glug, glug. This was round two of this attempt, and I will do my intro of what I'm drinking again this evening. This is the, I say again because I forgot to hit the go live yeah. button. Sorry. But thank you guys for commenting the fact that Ethan had pushed the right button. We were up. rocking and rolling. We'd like, have rolled through an entire hour. You, you were throwing questions in there. We were going to start answering them. And then I was like, oh, wait, no. Some of the recent questions and comments are, <laughs> are they ever going to go live? And I'm like, uh-oh. Whoops. Which, um, thank you for that. Otherwise, we would have gone the entire hour. Well, probably not maybe the entire hour. But gone for a while longer and gone... We're not recording. We're not live. Um, okay, so folks, this is the Jefferson's Ocean Aged at Sea. The cool thing about this is they throw all of the bourbon in the barrels, the barrels in the boat, and the boat toodles around the bay, um, or even further, depending on exactly where it's going. Each voyage is different. The weather supposedly ages the bourbon differently and so on and so forth. The couple that I really like are Voyage 19 and Voyage. Now, the newest one here that I found, 22. They're a special full weeded mash, and uh, they're delicious. Absolutely fantastic. Smooth drinking. Um, now, they are a little bit more expensive. I don't want to say super expensive, but they're going to run like $80, $85, depending on where you're at. So... Uh, it's more of a special thing for me, but, um, it is one that you should on average be able to find. Some people complain about how I get special bottles sometimes as gifts and whatever. And they're like, why don't you drink something normal? Okay. This is a normal one. It's a little spendy, but you can find it almost anywhere. And for all of you curious about what I'm enjoying this evening, I'm enjoying some ice cold water. Ooh. And my new favorite go-to snacks, sweet tart ropes. I didn't even know these were a thing. Saw them on the end cap at the grocery store, and I had to get me two bags. And I'm already halfway <laughs> through the second bag. They are so good. They're, like, addicting. If you haven't had them, you should try them. Mmm. Mmm. Get you some. Yep. I think Peter had those when we were in Alaska. Mm. He didn't share any with me. Ah. Uh. They're good. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into, I was rolling through these when, this is when we figured out that we'd screwed up, which <laughs> yeah. is about right back to where we are now. Sorry about that. We've got excited, so close, howdy, one minute until they're live, aka 11 minutes until they were live. Uh, sorry about that. And then we've got some people jumping right into questions. Um, now, we are, what are we at here? Just eight minutes in-ish. Eight minutes in? Yeah, eight and a half minutes in, ten minutes in. All right, so um, I want to answer a question, and then we're going to ask a question. So be prepared for the first trivia question for your chance to win the... I'm going to throw this back over here. Water. Okay. Let's see. You. Uh, this is a really good one because this is one that bothers me. 
fairly regularly, and I'm kind of like a, a dog play Nazi, okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. So this is, um, uh, this is uh, Remington Wood. Thanks for tuning in, buddy. Uh, Yawa, how rough is too rough for puppy playing with other dogs? Our GSP is nine weeks old. So the, I'm assuming that in this situation that the puppy is the one that is the doing the playing that's rough. How rough is too rough for a puppy playing with other dogs? So combination of the older dogs or the other dogs playing with the puppy or the puppy playing with the older dogs, there's a whole bunch of variants in there, and uh, I see it on a regular basis. Oh, we're just letting them burn off some steam, or we're just letting them wrestle or screw around or play or hang out or whatever. It always escalates. Always. It always escalates, and it turns into bad things. That's going to be... Um, somebody pushes it too far and then somebody snaps and grumps. And then if they snap and grump at the wrong dog, then you sudden you have a dog fight or you have a younger dog with an older dog and the older dog finally gets tired of it. And they say, you know, I said enough and actually chomp, chomp bites the puppy. And then you got to go for a vet visit to get a, an ear torn that's torn up or a nose that's bit. And then you have a puppy that's a little scared or whatever else it is. It's not or- ideal. Or a puppy that then thinks and learns that that's yeah, the way absolutely. that we communicate and then they try and communicate that way with other dogs or other small children because there's a pecking order or at least they're, the dogs think there's a pecking order then mm-hmm. and they're going to put a baby or another young dog or whatever in their place. It just teaches from the ground up that that is the proper way to communicate and I think that is active a part that the dogs are in our lives that's very easily transferable for them to go from this is the way I communicate with dogs to this is the way I communicate with my family right because we incorporate them as such big parts of the family that there's almost not a whole lot of differentiation between puppy and you know other dogs and family members sometimes so um how much is too much Anything over just kind of rolling around on the ground next to each other, laying there, um, we allow sometimes some like face fighting where they lay and their faces just go, but that's about the extent of it. And, uh, you know, even the, the root of that goes back to how I was raised. I have three brothers and we were all at home and troublemakers at the same time. And, um, if we started roughhousing or if we started doing anything, mom always said, take that crap outside. You know, this is, you're going to break something, whatever. So it's kind of the way that we incorporate that play inside. But when you get down to puppies, less is going to be better. And um, I think a lot of people confuse it with socialization. And they say, oh, these puppies are playing and they're socializing together. No, they're just developing bad habits in my hand, in my opinion. Then you have a a 100-pound dog or a 50-pound dog that rough houses the same way when they're a year old and they think that that is the expectation. I'm still a puppy. And you go, oh, they're just still a puppy. Um, You can work past all of those things just by saying, here's appropriate play. Let's do retrieving or let's do training sessions or here's a chew bone. These are all things that are good. Agreed. Awesome. Okay, so... Like I said, we're going to now ask you all a question, and it does look like we have quite a few people tuned in, which is fantastic. So question number one, let's start off with an easy one. Okay. Well, technically, I think these are all easy because I know the answers. Yeah, they're all fairly easy. We didn't want to go too difficult. If you are, okay. uh, if you are a fan... We'll, we'll work up to the hardest question. Okay. So... Hopefully, all of you guys that are tuning in live are also subscribers to our YouTube channel. If you're not, you should probably hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any of our awesome videos, as well as that's probably how you will know the answer to this question. Mm. What is the name of Bob's lab in our last video we put out on hunting a lab with a pointing dog? And I'm going to tell you right now, I don't give a rip about cheating. This is an open book test. If you've got another device there, bebop over, look at the last video that we posted and see if you can figure out what the dog's name was if you don't already know. Now, how you are entering into this contest is I need to start seeing these rolling through. What is that dog's name? Now, the next thing 
I want to say. Oh, we got some people getting it right already. Ooh, we got some fans here, baby. I like it. So um, I want to take one split second here in the beginning of this to say thank you. I want to say thank you to our fans. And specifically, I want to say thank you to our patrons. I was just going to say we've had a couple patrons pop in and say hey from Patreon. Absolutely. And I, I, you probably heard in passing us mention this or you've seen um, some mention of it with a here, click to subscribe on our Patreon account or any of those other things. But if you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy the content that we put out, you should be also saying thank you to the patrons because they are who help support us being able to continue to produce content. All of the money, every single dollar goes into producing more content for you guys. That's purchasing new equipment, um, helping with paying for the, the editing. editing or the uh, producing, if you will, um, and everything else in between, subscriptions to uh, this software that we're using right now to be able to stream live. All of these things come out of that account, and it's all to help push more content. So thank you, patrons. Thank you, all of our fans. But specifically, again, thank you to the patrons. I love it. Oh, my gosh. This is going to be, um, hopefully, that these questions might get a little bit harder because otherwise we're going to be entering a lot of names into that number generator thing. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so you said that you had a good one that you pulled from a YouTube question, which is yes. still a, a valid way to ask Yawa questions. We try and get to those as well. Um, throwing it, watching a YouTube video, you got a question, throw it in there. And um, if you are struggling to get your questions answered because we are getting more and more and more questions, folks, um, sign in up there on Patreon. We're getting to those very regularly, uh, dang near every day. And a lot of days I can get to them multiple times a day. It just kind of depends on what's happening here. So, so I thought this was a good question um, from Isaac Mesmer. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get a GSP in the future. I'm planning on having it trained because I don't feel fully confident in my training skills and time to train a great hunting dog. I plan on getting a puppy a few years down the road and training that one. My question is, is it better to get a puppy and send it to get trained or get a started dog? Pros and cons for each. Thanks. Mm. I like it. I thought it was a good question uh, because... First of all, who doesn't love puppies? Well, there are some people out there that don't necessarily love puppies because puppies, guys, are super cute, but they are a ton of work. Um, we have clients that say, hey, you know, puppy pick out is this day. Is there any way that you could hold on to my puppy for a few weeks? And I say, we'd really rather not because those first few weeks home are so important for continued Super development important. of your puppy from proper potty training and crate training. And those are some of the most difficult parts of raising a puppy is being, you know, super consistent so that you can build really good bladder control and pottying outside behaviors, as well as that crate training some puppies resist being in a crate a little bit more vocally and strong-willed, and it can be difficult to get those, you know, first few nights under your belt and get the puppy to settle in and learn that, hey, crate time's okay. Though we crate train our puppies prior to them going home, they still have been with litter mates at that point, so it is still a new transition going home and being away from their litter mates and crating. So, puppies can be a lot of work and they're not always for everyone. Um, and, but there can be a lot of reward as well. So you're talking about potentially sending your puppy off for training. Typically most trainers, um, won't take the puppy in for training until they're a little bit older, ready for some more formal training time. Yeah. Our age is a minimum of six months old. So you're going to get your puppy at eight weeks not send them off for formal training until six months. You've got four months of the basics and socialization and obedience and um, proper development of the behaviors like nail trimming, crate training, potty training, all of those things, proper dog interactions, proper people interactions that are really important for you to be working on. And again, a lot of work, but can be very rewarding to do that training and basics yourself as well as reaching out to us on Patreon, which we talk about a lot for some guidance in those early stages. If there's things you're struggling with can be really awesome and really rewarding. Now pros for a trained dog. 
I do. The, the biggest pro I would say for the train dog is that, you know, exactly what you're getting when you walk in the door, basically. Now I don't want to call puppies. A lot of times people use the term specifically. A puppy is a crapshoot. I don't believe that. I believe not that with, not with, you know, planned quality, out breeding. Yeah. Quality breeding program. We have a pretty dang good idea exactly how a major, a big majority of those puppies are going to turn out. Um, there are a few oddballs here and there, but a lot of times even before they're going home at eight weeks. I don't want to say oddballs because that just sounds, you know, mean to the puppy. They're oddball. Uh, More oddballs. of like a curveball, like, whoa, wasn't expecting that out of this litter. Well, and see, I wouldn't even say that it wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. It's just like you have the mass that's that 10 puppies seven of them are exactly the same there's maybe two on the higher end and two on the lower end or one i can't do math one and two yada yada let's say six are the same then there's two and two in each end whatever you've got an outlier okay there that's outliers a better, a better word. word okay so opposite ends of the spectrum yeah but we can see that at eight weeks um we've got a pretty dang good idea but still, there is the chance for some things to change a little bit where through development and that dog development, where, where you come and look at that trained dog, you go, I see exactly what you are, exactly what you're trained to. You're mature. This is your personality. It's pretty much what, we've, what you see is what you get there. So. Yes. So that would be a pro. You definitely know what you're getting. Um, some people say, well, I don't necessarily want to train dog because they're not going to bond with me the same way as if I had raised the puppy and you call a big bull honky on that one. And maybe different breeds are different, but we pr primarily deal with, you know, German short hair pointers as puppies and as trained dogs. So I wouldn't even say that different breeds could really be that different because I've worked with, um, you know, like we got Jenny, she's a pointer. She's yeah. a typical kennel rat as far as that before goes. we got her yeah mm -hmm. and she came in the house and she became my best buddy in the whole world little lap she, dog she curl up on my lap and we watch tv in the evening back when we watched tv Remember and those days? you know to take the time to build a little bit of a bond with that trained dog what i said remember those days when we watched tv uh, no i just skipped right over that because yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. the only tv we watch now is cars with aiden yeah <laughs> Race car so show, old. race car show. Race car show, that's what it is. Yeah. Yep. I made a deal with the devil. We're watching race car show tomorrow morning, so. Well, it's Thanksgiving, so. Yeah. Anyway, um, but taking a little bit of time when that new trained dog enters your family to build that bond um, through some food training sessions, things like that will be really important. But really, there's such affectionate dogs that are willing to work, willing to please. They want to be part of a family, a pack. And so getting an older trained dog to bond with you and your family is not something that I would say would be an issue. What? I'm enjoying reading these. There's so many good comments, and there's been several... Um, did we, I don't want to get too sidetracked. We pretty much covered I the think we covered puppy the pros versus... And cons. Yeah. Okay. So, I thought that was a good question, though. And wanted to hit on it because we get asked a lot about it. I'm going to bebop this out here because we've had a couple comments on that. Check that out right there. Is it blurry? No, it's not blurry. No, it there shouldn't. It should autofocus on that. Look at that. What's, What's up, up, homie? Yeah, baby. And pimped out on the back. Well, and that's blurry. blurry. That'll just give it a second. There. Boom. Standing stone. I love that. Look at that. Yes. Those are also... On the store. Their new one came in. It's all for me and my, my, my pigeons. Yes. You should check out the description on our website that I put on those hats. Oh, I don't even remember now. I don't even remember it's now. It's funny. All right. Let's get to another question, let's get to another question yeah. here. Um, we have some really good ones popping through... Okay, this one's interesting, and this is one that I, I'm going to, it's going to be a really quick one, just because I'm very interested to see more. This one says, yeah, a question. My puppy has warts between his toes. Took him to the vet. She said that they would go away on their own. I put a boot on him so it doesn't break open. Does the boot work, or should I, where's the rest of this? Keep him limited to outside. 
Okay, so my first question with this is, are you sure they're warts if they're between his toes? Because we see um, grass on infections happen that make a almost wart-like swollen yeah. puff area between their toes. So I would love to see pictures, whether you... Um, You'd probably have to send them... You're going to either have to email them to me or... or message them on Facebook or Instagram yeah, or something like Aaron, that. Aaron... Uh, Aaron Boyd, this is uh, for you, buddy. If you are still on, throw us a um, throw me over a uh, put pictures. a comment and say sending pictures, and we'll look yep. for those on our social media. Yep, 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 yep. Um, so we had a um, yeah, social media is perfect. Yeah. So Sue Carr said, "Can I have a shout out, please?" Yes, you can. Shout out. Thanks for joining <laughs> us, Sue. <laughs> I love it. All right, what else do we got here? Um, First live show from Aaron Boyd. Hey, hey, that's the guy that we're asking to see his dog's toe warts Holy or whatever they crap. are. Yeah, toe warts. I want to see pictures. Best you can get some pictures, send them over. We got one. Oh, subscribed. We got a new subscriber. Thank you very much. One, two. So this is an interesting question, um, and I would like more information to be able to answer it truly from Corey Duncan. What age would you recommend training a GSP to flush? So my question for you, because I need more information, is does your GSP know how to point, first of all, and have they had a hunting season before you're allowing them to start learning how to flush? That would be my recommendation is first you need your GSP to point and be formally woe trained so that if they start getting into a flushing frenzy, you can handle that. Um, but also having them hunt a season Steady to flush would be my recommendation because otherwise they're not going to necessarily know all the pieces and really put together what their true purpose is out there and start making those decisions to flush for themselves. Um, and releasing a GSP to flush is a completely okay, good thing to do. We do it with our dogs at times as well, but they're always more experienced dogs that have been formally woe trained before we're making that decision for them. Pop, glug, glug, glug. That'll be my next t-shirt. Hey, thanks for your business, Joshua Collins. They bring their puppy home on December 12th. Congratulations. And you got two clickers. Whoop, whoop. Fantastic. Uh, uh, a couple questions that popped up here about the actual waters. There was one that said, is this, let me see, where is it at? Uh, checking in from Pennsylvania. Hey, Dark Whiskey. How's it going, buddy? Um... Trying to send a chat was stressful. I'm sorry, Leslie. Um, Ethan Normal? No way. Where was it at? Somebody asked basically if this was a limited release or I tell you, we do have a limited number of them right now and they do take a while to get more of the, this is the aluminum waters now. So they don't, I, I plan on being able to stock them more, but we do have a limited number and I expect that they will go fairly quickly. Um, especially on some of those flash sales when they are discounted, mm -hmm, when they're discounted rock and roll in there. Very nice Jefferson's. All right. So, um, next one we got for a question here. And then after this question, we're going to go into question number two. And I was just counting through and there's some people that had more specifically correct answers than others, but there was like, yeah, but there was like 60 okay. some people that got, Ooh. yeah, so of the hundred, that's like half of y'all. That's fantastic. Okay. <laughs> Hopefully these questions get harder. Mm -hmm. Or uh, I'm going to have to figure out a better way to type all of these in. Um, Let's see here. So this is a good question from Phoebe Franklin. You got one? I have a nine week old Brock Francais. You guys always talk about having a bold and confident puppy. Anything specifically I can do to help facilitate this in my own pup? And that's a great question. And we do use that blanket statement. You know, you need a bold and confident puppy prior to being able to start some of this training. Before yeah. you start um, working on healing too much, you need a bold, confident, independent search in the field. Things like that. Because a bold, confident puppy is important. Those are puppies that are well socialized. Those are puppies that are ready to work. Those are puppies that are ready to train and ready to learn and are going to recover quickly if they do get startled or do have a little bit of a setback in training. So things that you can do. 
One is help your puppy learn to work for their meals, work for their food. That's really important. A puppy that's willing to work is a puppy that's going to be really focused and learn some boldness and confidence in their ability to do things and have a job. I talked to a gentleman about this just yesterday, and uh, we often describe that as first things first, we need to teach our dogs how to be dogs. And there's a pretty cool book that you may want to look into, um, and it is by Mark Goldberg. I think I got that right. Um, And it is called Let Dogs Be Dogs, maybe? It was written by him while he was studying dog training with the monks of New Skeet or something to that effect. Don't 100% quote me on that. I will find it before we're done here. It is, I believe, Mark with a C or something like that. Not the best place to be searching Amazon. Come on, let's go Google here. Okay. Well, he's looking up that. So a dog that's willing to work for their meals will be really important. You're obviously not on Do Not Disturb. It came through the computer. Ah, the computer's not on Do Not Disturb. Gotcha. Now, a well-socialized dog is also really important. And well-socialized doesn't necessarily mean a puppy that's used to playing with other dogs or other children. It means a dog that is able to adjust to new environments with boldness and confidence. Basically, um, if your puppy is exposed to a new situation in a new environment, they aren't timid in those situations, that they can work through those situations with boldness and confidence. And the way to help your puppy, if they're unsure of a situation. So for example, teaching a puppy to go up or down the stairs. Typically up is easier than down for whatever reason with our puppies, but they need encouragement, but not coddling. So if I need to get my puppy to come down the stairs with me, I can give them, you know, a little bit of momentum, not kick them down the stairs, but get them going so that they can realize that they can take a couple steps. Kick them (laughs) down the stairs. What does that even mean? (laughs) Well, I said, you know, give them a little momentum. Not all the momentum. And then um, be encouraging, you know, come on, pup, 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 let's go, let's go, down the stairs, you got this, you got this, come here, puppy. But not say, oh, it's okay, don't be scared, oh, puppy, puppy, it's okay. Because we don't want them to think that being scared of going down the stairs is okay. Any situation that they're not unsh- not sure of is not something that we want to coddle them. We get dogs that's that the come- biggest point. Is, I'd say that's the biggest point with those um quote unquote softer, lower drive kind of dogs is they show uncertainty in some situations. And I believe that people unbeknownst to them are positively reinforcing that behavior. Because for example, that's how we would maybe communicate with a small child and, you know, Aiden gets startled of something. I might say, oh, it's okay, buddy. But he understands English and he understands reasoning. And I can explain then to him, We don't need to be afraid to go down the stairs. It's just like going up the stairs, except in reverse, you know, but explain it through to him. And you can't do that with dogs. So we see this a lot with dogs that come in for training. They come in and another dog barks at them and they get freaked out because they've never been around another dog that's ever barked at them. And so they're pulling at the end of their lead and they're hunkering down and they're unsure. Well, their parents, their owners, Mm -hmm. try and coddle them and say, oh, it's okay, it's okay. Well, no, there's really no reason to be unsure or upset or afraid of this dog that is greeting you by barking and being vocal. They're not going to hurt you. They can't get to you. There's nothing to be afraid of. So telling them, oh, it's okay, isn't the best option, but trying to redirect their focus, get them thinking about something else, or just plain ignoring them and letting them recover and get over it on their own and realize, oh yeah, there isn't anything to be afraid of in this situation, moving on with my life. Absolutely. So socialization, also super important. Um, And then that not coddling those dogs when they have uncertainties. 
Um, and then last but not least, um, that would basically all kind of wrap into a dog that recovers quickly. I'm not saying that your dog won't ever show uncertainty or be startled of a situation, but they should be able to recover from that startlement very quickly to be able to continue on with training or whatever you're working on. I like it. Okay. Did you find your book? I did. It is Mark Goldberg, and it is the, uh, it's the title of the book is Let Dogs Be Dogs. Um, the I think art- you had that right. I, I think I said it right the first time, which is kind of surprising for me. Um, Let Dogs Be Dogs, and it says the understanding canine nature by and mastering the art of living with your dog. And they do a lot of really interesting things that involve um, – it's a lot of things that we had been putting into place here at the kennel, but I never really explained them to people to try and do with their dogs at home. Um, because it's a different environment. So uh, it's it's a good read. That would be one that I would look into. Uh, now, I believe it's time for question number two. And then I found a really good question that I wanted to answer in here next. Okay, question number two. What are the names of the current Quest Hatch puppies? Are, are you planning on keeping one of the Quest and Hatch pups, says Eric? Yes. Heck yes, yeah, we are. I've been waiting for a Questy puppy since Questy was a puppy. <laughs> you guys got to uh, introduce Aiden to Lightning McQueen. He will fall in love. That's exactly. Oh my gosh. He, he's already already there. Cars 1, 2, and 3. Race car show. Race car show. That's what we're, what, that's what we're yes. talking about. And I was actually surprised yeah. about how many of Pop. the characters that he actually knows club, their club, names. Club. Yeah, he knows them all. Yeah, I'm, I was like, I didn't even know their names. And I have had to watch the show with you multiple times. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Haunt, haunt. No, 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 folks. No. Every, oh, see, now people are just, now people are just copying some stuff. Show. Uh, you, yes, all of the all puppy of names. All of the puppy names. Not just one of them. I, I said, mm-hmm. what are the names? Ooh, this is. All the names. So this is uh it gets diff- more difficult. It has to. I, I don't see a single correct answer yet. Well, now that those people that came in chimed in with just one name know that we're looking for all the names, they can have an opportunity to re comment. So we may be seeing some more correct answers soon. <laughs> Here did you get? Come. Did you find your favorite question? Uh, I did find a good question. question. That you were looking for? Yep, I did find a good question. Um, this one says, "I just received my wrap fourteen fifty. I bought from your website. It works perfect. Thanks for your videos. Thanks for the business, Davis. And in case you guys didn't know, StandingStoneKennels.com does have a store attached to it that you can buy stuff for training your dog. That wasn't a question." I know. That was a statement while I was getting back to the question. It is right here. And the question was, what is the difference between training your dog to trail deer and point for deer instead of birds? Well, I will say at this point, I don't know very many states, areas, regions that allow you to, in the United States which that's making a huge assumption that you are in the United States. I'm sorry. Um, In the United States, I don't believe there's any place that you can actually still hunt deer with dogs. Pretty sure. If you can, somebody correct me, but I don't know of any place. So um, as far as the difference between, it would be legal versus not legal. Um, The other side of it is that people talk about uh, teaching dogs to blood trail deer and they're worried about dogs running deer while they are bird hunting. So um, the biggest differentiation there would be that we put a huge emphasis on blood and scent trailing of wounded game. And you actually, when you're training and developing a dog for that, I'm not a master in this, but I've done a few that have turned out pretty good. Um, we run those training blood trails through, uh, areas where deer often, um, 
are going to be mingling and running around so that w- the dog can start to differentiate between the blood trail that we've laid and a live deer that's running. So it's really more put into following of a wounded deer versus um, chasing live deer. So it really doesn't become a problem, but it is a good question that we get quite a bit. So I have one from Gavin Zong. Sorry if I mispronounced your name. When upland hunting, how do you get your dog to honor your friend's dog's retrieve without your dog trying to rip the bird out of the other dog's mouth? That's a good one. And that's a good question. Uh, I think it's a question and an issue that a lot of people have. And what it boils down to is handling and control of your own dog. And it's probably honestly easier for you if you are hunting with a friend and they have their own dog and you're not trying to handle maybe two dogs at once. But when you see that your friend's dog has made the retrieve or has beaten your dog to the bird, you need to recall your dog back to you. So Mm -hmm. collar conditioning to recall. That is the basis here. But also being able to handle that recall in a high distraction situation where that dog wants that retrieve. Well, you're saying, that's not your retrieve. I'm not going to allow you to fight over that bird, rip that bird in half, have a dog fight over that. You need to recall to me when I say. Which can be tough. I mean, it really can can be. be. And it's part of proofing the collar. Having a dog that responds to vibrate around the house and in the yard is one thing. Most dogs that have a lot of prey drive aren't going to respond to vibrate, especially in the beginning of the conditioning process of saying, hey, if you're beat to the retrieve, it's not yours. Come back. Then vice versa, when your dog makes it to the retrieve, the other dog needs to be called back so that they don't get their retrieve stolen either. Absolutely. But it's about having that control um, over the dog with collar conditioning to recall and having that situation proofed in high distracting situations so that they can respond to higher levels of stimulation when necessary. So we've got a lot of questions that are geared around retrieving right now, and I want to touch on a couple of them. So one of which was a nine-week-old puppy that says you can't get more than two to three retrieves. Then this would be a slightly older puppy that is teething, when should you suspend retrieves? And then it was last, how do I teach my four-month-old, Brittany, excuse me, to retrieve to hand? Okay, so all of these, um, you know, all of these kind of tie into puppy development and proper development through that process. And I can do, a, you know, kind of a broader coverage that won't take too long. But basically, in the beginning, we want to do shorter sessions, keeping the dog's focus. That is the key. You want to end that session before the dog loses focus. Now, that may be two or three retrieves like you're talking about. It may just be one. A lot of times when I start puppies out, I'm doing one, maybe two, teasing them, getting them all excited, putting it away. That leaves them at this constant feeling of, oh, that was fun. I'm ready for the next time that it comes out. And uh, you can almost, uh, somebody referred to it one time as like brainwashing the retrieve because They understand I always play the game for the extended amount of time that you play with me. And they never get an opportunity to do otherwise, which I don't love the term brainwashing, but it is kind of that direction. You can say conditioning the retrieve in a sense. uh, It's it's extreme conditioning. You know, I mean, you only get to see it this way that I throw it for you, you go get it and you come back. And that starts from little puppyhood on by us controlling and regulating that number of retrieves. Then as you progress, um, you can run into some issues with mouthing. Now, one of the ways that we develop, this is the question that ties in both of these here. One of the ways that we develop that retrieve to hand, which a lot of our dogs do naturally, that we develop um, is we play a little bit of tug and we work as much on the mouth of the dog, the handle, the deliver, as we do the actual fetching portion. And we do that by playing tug of war. And we add that little tug while they're standing there next to us. A little tug gets them to kind of hold a little tighter and you develop this strong mouth to hold on to the things that you've got there. And then when you want it. It's an opposition reflex for the dog in a sense where you're pulling that object mm, away from them and they say, wait a minute, I don't want to let go. Just like when you're pulling on, when a dog's pulling on leash. Yep, and I can hear them right now. They're going, wait, 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 wait. I want the dog to give it to me. And 
if we do this properly, exactly what Kat's saying, you you build that uh, through conditioning, that opposition reflex and strength and that behavior to hold on to the object. We can do a couple really simple things with, you know, putting your thumb kind of gum into the back corner of their mouth and roll the bumper out. That comes out pretty quick. Or reach back and grab the flank. It's a light pickup and the, they spit the thing. It's really easy to get the bumper from them, especially as puppies, and they learn pretty quick that when I want it, I just take it. And when I want them to hold on to it, I can leave it there, and they want to hold on to it until I'm physically taking it from them. Yeah, again, part of the conditioning process. So that is how we develop that natural retrieve with a young puppy, like a four-month-old puppy. Now, all of our dogs go through that major teething stage, and when we hit that where teeth are falling out and there's blood on your bumpers and things like that are happening during a session, that's when we are for sure taking a break. Yes. When you come back to it, it should be a great behavior. Um, that is ready to pick right back up where you left off. Good question. You got another? From East Bay Signing Services. I think this is Olive's parents, if I remember correctly. Yeah. How so. many dogs that you train come back to be finished after their first session? So, first of all, finished is more of a... Relative term. Relative term. Yeah, Mm -hmm. that's the word I was looking for. Uh, Finished means something different from to everyone, Uh, whether Mm -hmm. that's a titled dog, a dog that's steady to wing shot and fall, just a dog that is more polished and more steady, a dog that has gone and hunted a season, got a little sloppy and needed things tuned up. Um, But ultimately, I would say 10 to 15%, would you say, Ethan, is an accurate estimate of dogs that have been Um, in for training come back for more advanced training finish work whether that's you know working on a trained retrieve later working on extra steadiness later just coming back in for a tune-up prior to the next season so i'd say that number's changed a lot uh, because we went from doing uh, when we were trying to get started and trying to like convince people to let us train their dog for them um We did really, 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 really short programs, and that left a lot of room for improvement. And now we're to the point where a majority of the dogs are coming through, and they're pretty dang polished when they leave. Um, Yeah, I would say usually, you know, a dog would come in again for maybe four Tune-ups or formal retrieving work or some extra steadiness work or some more advanced testing that we're going to do with the dog. And that number is probably closer to 10% of dogs that have been in for training come back for training for some reason or another. Yeah, we get some. Uh, our recommendation always is pick up the dog, take them hunting, call us if you have issues or things that you want improved on, and then we set it up and fix them. That's where, you know, take them to the next level, yep. basically. So that's a really good question. I think that we are about to the point where we should ask another question, and I think we're going to have to do a tiebreaker because we've got, like, again, 50 or 60 people got all these right. These questions were too easy. I was like, ah, they won't, they won't be able to get all these. I was like, Y'all they are, are going to be too easy. Okay. I knew this was going to be fun. Okay, okay, okay. So we're we're probably going to have to come up with a fourth question, and that's going to be a, the, a, the, the grand finale. Okay, so of all the finales. last question that I had come up with is, how is Grandpa Rex related to Thunder? Mm. You all know? Throw it in the comments. I'm looking. Nobody's commented yet. Ha! That was a really Ooh, tough one, apparently. tricky. We're, we've got people counting. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Wait, 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 wait. Is, is Thunder out of X? No, he's not. What? Oh, my gosh. People's brains. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. We've got some answers coming in. Uh-oh. I'm not going to say whether they're right or wrong. Uh-oh. Because they're different, so... That'll tell you something. All right. And while you all are thinking, I've got a picking up a six-month-old wine. I've trained plenty of puppies, never trained, um, never trained to retrieve bird dog. I'm excited for this. Do you guys have any tips for the new retrieval trainer with my puppy? Okay, so you're pointing dogs you've never actually taught them to retrieve. I'm guessing that's what that sounds. And uh, Weimaraner is a versatile pup, so that's fantastic. Um, I would recommend, 
there's a big theme here tonight with the retrieving questions. I love it. Um, I would recommend going to standingstonekennels.com slash links. When you get there, you can click on Rogues playlist, and you can click on Quests playlist, and you can click on, click on Sprigs playlist, and then I'll get you to the playlist section, and you can click on Thunder, and you can click on uh, Clutch has got his in there. And we have different retrieving videos for all of those puppies because every single one of them learned how to retrieve differently. Find what seems to be the closest personality to your little wine puppy. I'm guessing it could potentially be... I have no idea. But... Um, Find one of those, watch those videos on the retrieving portion, or you can go to YouTube and search Standing Stone Kennels Retrieving, and that's going to give you a whole barrage of uh, video options. Click on the puppy ones. That's going to get you a pretty dang good start. You got another one? Oh, I just wanted to say from Kate Hicken Looper, you can hunt deer with dogs in Florida. Did not know that. State of Florida and Georgia, we use dogs for deer. Kenny Simons. You run deer with dogs. Huh. I want to get signed up for Who this. Knew? No, I want to get signed up for this. How do we get involved in a deer and a dog deer hunting combination? Ooh, yeah. This person really wanted their question answered, so I'm glad that we did. I'm pretty sure you answered, GM, when during puppy teething, should we suspend retrieves? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yep. So, they, they, you, GM, Ooh. you asked that one a lot, and I was like, I think I've read this question <laughs> multiple times. Glad it got answered. Uh, we're getting some really good, uh, we get some good answers in here. There's a few people in here that... Uh, are getting it right. There's a few people that are getting it wrong. There's a few people that are... Oh, you can hunt uh, deer with dogs in Louisiana. Uh, Ontario. And Louisiana. And Louisiana. So I was completely wrong, and I would love the opportunity to hunt deer with dogs. I don't know how you do this, but it sounds fun. Sure. I mean, is it kind of like sure. hunting hogs? All right. Like the, the dogs chase down and... Catch and kill the deer or what? And they just run them past you kind of like rabbits, I bet. You know you know what I'm talking about? Rabbit hunting? No? You don't know? No. No. All right. So I found one other one here. Um, well, I have another one. You got from one. A, Go. From I'm a... Video from before that I had grabbed because I thought this would maybe be a good one if we n had time to get to it. Good. That's okay. what I was looking for. That one's the one. From Kalina Brown. I just got my dog and he is 15 weeks old and I'm trying to train him. He wasn't trained at his old home. Any tips? So this is a really good question. I think that most people typically get their puppies at around eight weeks, but there are a lot of people that, you know, their puppies don't go home till 10 weeks or 12 weeks or 14 weeks or 15 weeks. And depending on where you got the puppy, there may or may not have been much training done between that eight week mark and when you got your puppy home. So you can start at the beginning. Even though your puppy's 15 weeks old and all of our puppy playlists and training videos say, hey, this is the first thing you do when you get your eight-week-old puppy home, start charging the clicker, well, start at the beginning. So if your 15-week-old puppy has had no training, you can still start at the beginning of charging the clicker, which we've talked about already kind of in this Yawa of, you know, getting your dog to understand that they have to work for their meals, um, creates a mentality that they have to work, they need it's a, a job. Huge thing that the dogs need to understand. It allows them to uh, working be mentally is, stable is necessary. and yeah. yeah, and learn how to be a dog, basically. Absolutely. So start from the beginning and progress as your dog is ready for those next steps. If they're showing an understanding, they're ready for the next step. If they're acting confused or they are 
you know, not being consistent with their behaviors, it's probably showing that they're not ready for the next step. As well as if you need extra help and guidance, you can definitely check us out on patreon.com slash standing stone kennels, because that's a really great way for us to evaluate your training session with our video exchange process. Yes. Our best tool to help you is to read your training session with our eyes. And uh, even better yet is to do it live. I mean, that's the fantastic way to do it. That's our new level on Patreon, and it's really, really powerful. All right, we've got uh, Javier says, hello, uh, patron here. When are you coming to Guatemala? The fishing boat is ready. Oh, Ah, my gosh. Buddy, that sounds fantastic. When is the fishing season? I don't even know these things. Um, uh, Here it says, we'll only fetch stuffed animals. Okay. Pick one. And utilize that as your retrieving toy to develop a good behavior. That's a that's a really good thing. Sometimes uh, we have puppies that are a little less driven to begin with, and I'll use like a rolled up sock. It's got a couple knots in it. It's really lightweight, or a paint roller. Um, they're soft, fluffy. They're small enough. They're extremely lightweight. Those are but kind of moves more toward the dowel or um, bumper type of shape. material shape. Yep. So. Um, that's another option. That's a really, really good option. Yeah. And typically if we see a dog that is going to be all about retrieving, that's what we're gonna have to title this one. Yes. Lots of retrieving questions, but sometimes when we see a dog that is very, um, toy oriented in a sense that they're only interested in playing with their toys and that retrieve is pretty sloppy because it's mostly just play that usually indicates to us that we need to take the toys away so that that's not the go-to way to entertain ourselves anymore is self-play and self-entertainment. And so we take those toys away and we pull either one toy or one object that becomes the retrieving object. And that's where we get to play. And that's where we get to have fun. And that's what our retrieving sessions basically revolve around at that point. That is a, a very valid point. Um, sometimes that is the, the ticket, taking everything else away. Like shooting 150-pound rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we've got time for one more question, and then we've got to figure out who's winning this water, and that's going to be difficult. It says... The fishing um, season's all year long, but December is the best for sailfish. Ooh. Mahi-mahi and yellowfish. All of the fish that I'm probably not supposed to eat right now. Ooh, maybe we plan next, next year. December? Christmas next year. Yeah, baby. That sounds fantastic. Uh, it says here, Yawa question. I got a good one. It says, what are your recommendations for getting the best training experience possible out of a pen-raised pheasant preserve hunt? This is a good one. This is something that a lot of people have the opportunity to go on. And in my opinion, we're going to go pop, glug, glug, glug. Just a little bit because we're almost done. <sighs> In my we're opinion, almost done until we have to start figuring out who won this water. We're going to have to come up with some kind of tiebreaker because there's like 40 of you or so that are... Think of a difficult question while I answer this one, okay? All right, so... Uh, shooting preserves, hunting preserves, pheasant preserves, whatever you want to call them, can either make or break a dog. Ruin a dog. Let's not break. Let's ruin dogs, okay? And what I mean by that is crappy birds make crappy dogs, in my opinion, and they learn naughty habits. They learn to overpressure birds. They learn to that they can sometimes catch them, and then dogs with high amounts of prey drive can turn into even more trouble. Um, it's kind of like a, a vicious cycle of spiraling out, of spy, spiraling out of control. And the, the big thing that I could say here is going to be you need to utilize as much of a regulated or controlled type of situation in your hunting or shooting preserve environment. Um, and that's going to involve making sure that your color condition to woe it's going to make sure if you're not 100% there, utilizing the check cord so you can help hold the pup back once the point is established. It's not my go-to, but if you are um, if you have the three recommended that uh, we are, which is uh, collar condition for recall, um, gun introduction, and bird introduction, if you have those three things and you're just going to go out and wing it, uh, maybe a check cord isn't a bad idea to let them drag. We have... Um, as a sales pitch, but the ones that we have are, are really smooth. 
they drag through stuff, don't get tangled up easily. So that would be a good option for that. But um, making sure that you can put as much control over that situation as possible is going to be ideal. And why that's ideal is it's going to prevent the pup from learning bad habits. I'm going to leave you with the statement that crappy birds make a crappy bird dog. So the more emphasis you can put on the most wild-like birds, the better off you're going to be. Um, having them, if you go to the preserve and they have the option, ask them not to dizzy them. Just dump them out of the box. Now, this is drastically going to reduce the percentage of birds that you kill on that day because they're going to fly out there. They're going to be more wild-like, but your dog is going to learn so much more from that. Um, keep in mind that a 50% cleanup of what you have put out is a really good number. So, if you have them dump them out of the box without dizzying them and you're finding 50% or better, um, you're doing really, really good. So the more wildlike we can set that up, the better off you're going to be in the long run. What do you got? Oh, I just, I love all of these comments of, it's my birthday tomorrow in case you just need to pick me for the water. And <laughs> it's okay, I'll just take the water. No need to stress. <laughs> love it. Okay, so I have to show Ethan my next Okay, what's your question? Questions and see which one he thinks is going to be the hardest. He might not even know the answers to these. I know all the answers. I know all the answers. Mm. We may we may have to use more of these because <laughs> these are all good ones, but let's just continue playing trivia until we run out of we we got four more options here. Start at the top, work your way down. I think those are good. I mean, okay, okay. okay. We love playing trivia. We're gonna with work you guys. through this real quick. It's, instead of it's not Yawa, it's uh, we, Waya. We, yeah, we, we ask, ask you answer. answer, baby. Yeah. Okay. What was the name? Oh, and happy birthday, by the way. Oh yeah. Hopefully you do win. That would be awesome. Happy birthday to you. What was the name of our first GSP? All right, you guys have sixty seconds to answer. Starting now. Doom, 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 doom. Happy Thanksgiving is incorrect, guys. Just kidding. Happy Thanksgiving <laughs> to you guys, too. That, that was like the things that were popping through right away. Uh, I wonder if I can find a... Timer oh, on your list. phone? There's a thing. Oh, yeah, we're getting a bunch of uh, answers in here. Nice. Oh, I love all you guys. You guys are and fantastic. I love how much you guys love us. Okay. Well, I guess that was easy. too many winners. I don't know. I'm new here. <laughs> <laughs> You'll learn. How long have we been married? Mm. <sighs> Math. Math. I know the answer to this one. Easy money. Ooh, I like this. This person's helping us out. They know all four answers, and they've numbered their responses. Ah, I like it. That's helpful because there's way too many <laughs> comments in here. Ooh, they're bebopping in here. Ooh, this one This one might this be the be tiebreaker. This may be the, the tiebreaker here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> now these answers have Ethan second-guessing what he thinks he knows. Uh-oh. No. <laughs> Come on now. <laughs> oh, I thought that, that says nine question mark. I thought it said 97. I was like, yo, I am not even anywhere near old enough to be married for 97 years. That'd be a hell of a feat, though. If cats could for survive me for 97 years... Mm. Depends on who you ask. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 no. Well, I think this that's pretty good. Uh, All right, we're going to give another 10 seconds on the counter on this one. I just don't want to drag this out forever for y'all. Ooh, we got people that are like cramming. They're like, God dang it. Hmm. 
<laughs> or what Ethan doesn't know. Ethan knows. Ethan knows. Oh, I, I 97 think that's... 97 dog years. I like it. 97 dog years. I think that might be the one that's going to split us out. Now, we need to be able to double check that uh, the person with the right year has the right other questions. So... Okay. We just have... So... We're cutting it off at whoever answered 97 dog years. Anything above there, we'll look at for answers. Anything below there, you were out of time. An hour and a half. (laughs) Which, all of those below there were wrong anyway. So, I'm not cutting you out because you were right. So, What happens if Ethan answers different than yours, Kat? Okay, well... Should we just answer that last one first? Yeah, 12. Uh, 12. Yeah, yeah, 12. I know these things. 8, 2, oh, 08. Yeah, oh, 08, baby. Um, so. All right. So uh, anybody that answered 12, you just need to just make a quick comment of your answers one through. Which it looks like there are Sarah Lucas got 12 years right. Mm-hmm. And Did you have the other answers correct? You need to throw one, two, three, four. Jared to... Jackson got 12 years correct. Mm-hmm. And I think those were the only two. One, two, three, four. We need your one, two, three, four. Jared Jackson, if you're still in here, and Sarah, Sarah Lucas. Lucas. Josh Moore. (laughs) Nice try, buddy. You were so close. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, we we have made it a while. We have made it a while. Are you going to scroll up and start trying to look? No. Oh, mine, like, I can't even populate questions from, I'd have to go back. Can you populate? Past the puppy names? Uh, yeah, nope. Nope. So it cuts off our uh, comments, so hopefully you've got you guys the answers. Got, otherwise, we have to go on. Maybe the computer will let us see them. Nope. Nope. So live, uh, this is uh, we'll have to we'll have to rethink this process because I'd like to do more giveaways during these, and uh, we'll just have to make them harder. Mm-hmm. All right, Jared, we need your answers. One, two, three, four. You got number five correct. What were your answers on one through four? Since we can't scroll back to look and check you. Mm-hmm. Same with Sarah Lucas. Unless Sarah Lucas is no longer here, I gotta believe Sarah's still here. I mean, she just answered so. Unless they also tuned in late and didn't answer the first couple questions. Uh oh. Do, 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 we may have totally screwed ourselves. How are we going to? We're going to give this away to somebody, and I want to just make sure that we get it. Uh, if you're not first, <laughs> you're last. <laughs> Shake and bake, baby. Woo! <laughs> How many <laughs> bourbons has he been drank? <laughs> okay, here's Sarah Lucas. Oh, Sammy. And so Sarah had them all right. Ooh. And so Memphis, Hocus Pocus, Spooky, Grim, Haunt, Reaper, and Beast. And great great grandpa. And Sammy. My wife cheated off my answers. <laughs> That. Josh Moore, I don't know. Oh. Somebody's sending us some beer. Heck yeah. Uh, I think, I mean, I'm going to I'm gonna set a, a 60 seconds oh, so, there. On. Oh, no, Jared Jackson says he's still here. Okay, Jared, you need to answer. What were your answers, one through four? Were you here? Did you get all of the answers? Do you know what the questions are in the beginning? All right, I'm going to go 60 seconds. Oh, Memphis, Hocus Pocus, Spooky, Grim, Hot, Reaper, Beast, Great, Great, Grandpa, Philip. Okay, 
he had them all right, but I had oh, technically we had just read Sarah's and said hers were all right too. So whatever. All right. So this time it was is this time it was not perfect system, but it was we'll a get system. It figured out. Okay. Do your random. So generator we'll do the thing. random generator of two people. Where is that app right here? Okay. It's a free app, so it's we have free. to go through the ad. Get this big. Okay. Here we go. We need to add a name. What is it? Sarah? Sarah. And? Jared. Is it J? How J-A-R-R-E-D. Is it J-A-R-R-E-D. A-R-R-E-D. Okay. Added. They're both in here. And I hit the... Uh, you have to show it. Well, yeah, they're both in there. Oh, uh, yeah, you're you're probably in camera there. It kind of, when it populates, they're both there. Blue, pink, or purple, excuse me, look at a little different color here. Go like that. That was an advertisement. Fucking dang. Oh, it's mixing, mixing the names. names. Automatic. Automatic. Uh, dark, why not? Uh, record. I'm not interested in recording. It just shows, it shows a list at the end. I'll show you here. Raffle. Okay. It looks like the winner is. So we go with one, right? Number one. Jared. Go down there. It's blurry. Okay, Jared. Congratulations to Jared for winning the water. You will have to send us your contact information. I would recommend not putting it on YouTube for everyone to know where you live. Nah, send us a direct message, buddy, on uh, one of the platforms or email us, and we'll get that out to you ASAP. Hey, I want to say thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks for tuning in, spending your hour this evening with us. And having fun with us answering some of our questions. That was fun. Yeah, we had a blast. We're going to continue to come up with creative ways to give you guys cool things for tuning in here with us live. I'm the guy with the pink gun. I'm Cat the dog trainer. And we will see you in the next video.